let's start building our hero character next. So this guy is going to be the Headless Horseman. So that's under figures, perhaps. There we go. <laughs> Headless Horseman HD for Genesis 8 male HD. So many, there's really, really cool things in this uh, in the Spooky Hollow bundle. I've, I highly recommend you look into it. All these items are also available separately if you want. I'm just going to make this a little bit brighter so that I can see what I'm doing here. So this looks a bit like the alien guy here, doesn't it? Headless Horseman. I'm going to give him a coat as well. But the coolest thing about the guy is that this guy, I think under under materials, under anatomy, this is where the pumpkin head comes in. So you've seen this in one of the promo images here, I believe. And somebody put this guy in the garage, I think. Yes, here, where the little girl stands here on the right and this head is in the garage. That's just so, so cool. So you can use it for something like that as well. It has uh, emissive materials on the inside and it's just, you know, you can use it as a standalone prop as well. So with him selected, I'll put that guy on, I believe. There it is. And I might move the position up a little bit. So the, the pumpkin is now basically replacing the head. But I like the idea of it kind of hovering above his head. Something like that. Let's give him something to wear as well. And that's not from the Headless Horseman bundle. That is from under wardrobe. That is the Plague Doctor. Force Plague Doctor. I'm not going to load all, so there is a thing that says all, but that also gives you the raven mask and the gloves, and I don't think I want him to wear gloves. He has very sharp nails. It would just poke right through, so I'll, I'll just use the overcoat separately. Let's go and fit the overcoat to the Headless Horseman and parent it to that. See if, if that works. Does it? Overcoat is parented to here. Yeah, perfect. It is a Deforce item, so we can play with that. The overcoat also has a hood here and we don't really that's not going to fit into that's just not going to go well together with the with the pumpkin head so on the overcoat on the this is how i do it on the parameters tab have a look under actor and then see uh, what bits and pieces you have here so i've got adjustment for example, movement and overcoat. So those are all potential places in which you can have a look at what morphs might be available with a clothing item. So you can have adjustment morphs like, you know, shoulders wider or something like hips wider or slimmer so that you can make things, just adjust things, just, just to fit even after you've run Deforce. That's kind of nice. In my case, all I need is the hood down morph and that'll do this. So that'll just put the hood down and that's kind of nice so this is this is probably how he would wear his overcoat hood is down and then we don't have to worry about it anymore there he would wear it like that then also the headless horseman he probably also with the plague doctor outfit comes with a couple of props namely a lantern that he holds i kind of like that he holds a lantern Lantern also glows a little bit and he also has some kind of a staff and the staff has a rigged kind of ball here on the front So let's see how we can how we can pose him Like that it comes with poses as well Which is nice so it gives you a little heads a head start there on how you'd like your character to explore the neighborhood Whoops <laughs> Hey, that's no good. The pumpkin, I might just go and, and parent that properly. Let me go actually get rid of the pumpkin. There was a wearable, wasn't it? Let me go back to the figure. I think it should have popped into place properly here. Pumpkin prop or the wearable. I probably should have used the wearable. Is that right? There we go. Because So the difference was the prop just parented itself, whereas the wearable is a smart prop and that parents itself into the correct uh, spot. So even if I wanted to move it now, I can just move it up. But you can see that it's in the scene hierarchy parented to the head. So wherever the head moves, this thing would move as well. So the benefit of that is if you have the the plague doctor poses and you strike a pose in which he moves his head the pumpkin will move so that's that's the that's the reason for that and that's why that is important i'm thinking just the first the first pose here the first or the second one and then we'll just move his staff 
away like this is nice I, if i'm just looking at the at the lantern here he's kind of holding it and looking where has this where's this fiend just come from he can also go and turn his head like you know hmm? huh huh what's going on and then i think the arm i might just use a bit of power pose magic to uh to pause that with the whole arm group Oop, that's a little that's not correct always takes a little bit of getting used to this is the whole arm group here at this point uh, this these are the individual joints here and this here on the outside of the body that's the whole group and if you left click and drag that up and down or left and right it will actually move the arm or all the joints in that figure so it's very very helpful posing a you can still go ahead and do this manually so if you needed to make a manual adjustment let's have a look if its hands are correct here this is why i like doing this in a separate scene so if i were to do this in situ there's a lot of overhead that goes into moving the background geometry and we don't really need that until we're absolutely happy with the fingers here so i can see that this finger is kind of going through the lantern a little bit so that is his left hand let me see that's also a power pose thing left hand that's this here and that's the what's the finger the ring finger isn't it so that can be adjusted like that or like that so that's again that's the whole finger group or this here is the finger joint so he's probably he might just try and hold it like that maybe i don't know how you eat breakfast with nails like that <laughs> but yeah I, I think this is probably how he'd do it maybe the thumb also out a little bit yeah that'll work <laughs> how's the staff Control F will zoom you in on whatever you've got selected. So that's kind of nice if you're either far away from something and you think I want to do something with this hand. If you hold Control Alt and try to rotate around it, you think, hey, that's not in the center. That's that totally sucks, man. What's going on? You just select whatever you want to focus on. Hit Control F and that, that'll zoom it right into the middle of the viewport. And if it's too close, you can always zoom out and then it'll rotate around this one piece. So that's a very, very helpful thing to do. Let's go and have a look at the thumb placement here. I think that the thumb intersects a little bit with the staff. So I'll move that up a tad. Maybe that's too much like that. It's going to be... I can live with that. His thumb's probably a bit squishy, so we could probably get away with this. Not that anyone's really going to... Whoops. Hello. That's on the inside of the staff. Interesting. Not that anyone's really going to see that, but hey. There. We're good. We're good. We're good. Let's see what this guy... Oh, he doesn't have boots. Poor little guy. He needs, he needs shoes, doesn't he? Totally forgot his... Forgot his boots. He can't go out without boots. He also has, in fact, pants. Let's, let's give him some pants. There we go. Pantaloons, in fact. That looks good. Before we run DeForce, let's have a look what this looks like in iRay and then also worry about this. I think I'm kind of happy with the pose, but in a real world scenario, this thing would probably dangle. And if you look closely at what the developer's done here, uh, it is rigged. This whole thing, the this part of the object is rigged. So it has, how many is that here? It has over 20 chains which is kind of awesome. So let's see if we can pull this guy down by the magic of IK chains. All the other bits and pieces should follow. And that's it pulled down. That's, that's really handy. So you can imagine you could put morphs on this or whatnot, but, but I think that rigging that like that with, with 20 segments, that's actually very nice. Much appreciated. Makes your life a lot easier. Again, adds a little bit of believability to the scene. You can also make the swing if you like. So you can just go and move this thing left or right. There might even be morphs in there that will that will actually move this in a proper manner. Who knows? I'm just going to leave it like this. That's, that's fine for me. Let's see what this looks like once I saved it, Nate, right? <laughs> Let me go save this guy. Once again, as a sub scene in my characters folder. I'll call him Hero V1. Just him and his clothing. 